hey guys, I just got back from my local hobby shop and I just picked up something pretty awesome and I'm real excited. So I'm going to set the studio up while you guys watch the intro and we'll be right back. So, as you guys may or may not know, today is the first day that the Soul Blight Grave Lords Army is available for purchase. And I just picked up my pre order, and I've got a lot of stuff I'm excited to show you. We've got two boxes of zombies, two boxes of skeleton, one box of fell bats, two boxes of blood knight, and one mother of nightmares. Not to mention our little vampire lord buddy here. What we're going to be doing, a lot of people do. 24 hour army painting challenges. Where I'm at right now, not something I can conceivably do. However, I do want to do some sort of a challenge because this was the army that ever since I got into Warhammer was something I wanted to play, but it didn't exist. And now it does, and I want to do something to celebrate that because it's a pretty cool thing. Every day this week, Monday through Friday, I'm going to be posting a video of me painting one of these units. And hopefully, that's something I can manage. I don't think I'm going to be doing much sleeping this week. So today we're starting out with the skeletons and uh, looking at the time, I better get on that if I want this video out by Monday. half the box so I'll go ahead and jump back to you guys uh, right after I finish the rest of them see you soon all right so that is 20 skeletons built and man was it fun if you guys are building these at home I definitely recommend being a little bit careful uh, some of these legs the bits are really really fragile and there was one that I even broke uh, but I was able to manage to put it back together but it was not a good time but other than that, man, these sculpts are absolutely beautiful. I love that every single one of these skeletons has character to it. You know, I've got some mantic zombies around here, and I've got some reaper bone zombies, uh, skeletons, rather. And, you know, those are really great models, too. Don't get me wrong, but they're all posed just like you'd pose any other infantry model. Whereas these guys constantly look like they're falling apart because there's nothing holding them together. And I just have to say, GW, great job with that. Anyway, now it's time to get to priming. So I'm gonna set up the airbrush and we'll be right back. So for priming these guys, we're just gonna do a basic Zenithal highlight. Basically, just gonna prime them in black and then shoot some white ink from the top. Uh, so I'm gonna stop talking about it and get doing it. All right, now everything's black. When we do the Zenithal here, I'm going to be spraying white from above, obviously, that's what a Zenithal Prime is. However, on your normal Zenithal, uh, you go kind of a 45 degree angle around the model uh, to create a softer light. I'm going to go pretty much exactly top down because I want really stark contrast between my shadows and highlights. 
uh, and you'll see why as I kind of go along with the painting process. So follow along. guys now we're on to the fun part we get to finally put some color down on these bad boys we're gonna be stealing a page out of marco frizioni's book from no just Mika. and we're gonna just slap some contrast paints on the cloaks a little bit of vallejo silver mixed in with some inks and finish up the little details after that so first part of the process is to throw some flesh terror red on all the cloth and I'll see you guys again after that. All right, guys, now with the red out of the way, it's time to start working on the armor. We're going to do something that I think is a pretty neat trick. We're going to take this Vallejo metal color chrome, and we're going to mix in a little bit of Amsterdam turquoise blue ink, just to give it this feeling of uh, it's nighttime and, and the night sky is reflecting off the armor. Something a little bit more interesting than just a pure silver color. I'm going to get the camera set up onto the palette here and show you how I mix that up. And we're going to get to painting. Enjoy. that done the only thing left to base coat is the leathers and the woods so for the sake of speed I'm just gonna be using one brown on all the belts and woods just to speed things up uh, because I've got another 20 of these to do after this and if I decide I want another 40 of them I definitely want the paint job to be something I can do pretty quickly so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on that um, besides, I think the armor and robes are really the main focal points here. So I'm just going to rip, whip out my Rhinox hide and get those going. Then we're just going to throw on some oil washes, base them, and call them good. <laughs> this is almost the final step here we've got a couple of oil paints and we're gonna thin them down into nice washes slap them all over the thing and then clean them up uh, we got burnt umber we're gonna mix in a little bit of black and I've got a yellow ochre we're gonna kind of use a combination of all three of those to make them look nice and dirty uh, then we're gonna give them about 15 minutes and uh, then we're going to come back in and clean them up with our mineral spirits.
models all cleaned up, there's only one thing left to do, and that's base them. For that, I'm just going to be doing a brown texture paint thing, make them look like they're walking through mud. Um, I'm going to be using something I mixed up myself here, using brown paint, tile grout, and sand. It's nothing fancy. Hopefully, throughout the rest of the week, I can do some slightly more interesting bases, but I am running out of time. It's about 3 a.m. right now, and I still got to edit this thing and get it posted for you. So, mud bases it is. I'm pretty happy with the way these turned out. Like I said, I wish I would have had some time to do something a little more special with the bases, but I did get a late start today and uh, had a lot of things come up that kind of kept me from doing what I wanted to do. But all in all, I'm really excited with these models and I can't wait to uh, get on to some more of it and finish out this week. really love the way that the red contrasts against the blue and all the oils turned out really nice on them. Um, I hope that you guys learned something or, or have been inspired to start pushing away at your pile of shame, kind of, you know, slay the gray, as uh, the boys over at Trapped Under Plastic say. If there's anything else that I do to these models, it'll probably be to put uh, some matte varnish onto the red, because some of those oils got a little bit shiny there. Um, but I'm going to end up doing that after I do the editing. It's already five in the morning and I got to get this video out today. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for watching. It'd mean the world to me if you could like and subscribe and, uh, share this video with your friends and tune in tomorrow to see me work on the fell bats. I've got some pretty cool ideas for that. We're going to be using a little more oils. Um, and that's going to be, that's, that's exciting. Um, if you would like to support me any further, head on over to HobbyGoblinStudios.com and uh, send me a request for a commission. I'd love to work with you, love to do something for you. Um, and until next time, keep on crafting.